boom. All right, what is up, everyone? Uh, episode two today of the Of Like Minds video podcast. Today we have a special, special guest today, my friend Jason Patio. Um, Jason, welcome. Thank you for uh, giving us your time today and coming on to the show. Um, really, really appreciate it. Uh, first, I just want to check in with you. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing right. Um, it's a great day outside. I'm really excited about this podcast that you're starting. So, feeling good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, first, I definitely wanted to uh, dive into just a little bit about Jason before we get started. Uh, Jason is a wonderful graphic designer. Um, he's a leader in the community, um, in the San Diego community, in, in terms of that artistry and also in the dance world, Choreo Cookies, he's one of our directors. And so we're gonna be talking about things from his profession, going into graphic design, um, being a leader, being a dancer for such a long time in our community. And those are just among many other topics that we're gonna talk about. So I think first it would be um, awesome to talk about Jason, um, just being an artist and being a Filipino and just kind of how you even started that journey, I feel like just coming from a Filipino background myself, it's, uh, it's very black and white in terms of you're going to be a doctor, a nurse, or engineer, maybe a lawyer, but uh, anything outside those few professions, uh, you get a lot of question marks and you get a lot of um, odd looks. So just tell us about, first, how did you even uh, get into that, to, to that realm? Um, I, I grew up as an only child, so I had a lot of time in my hands. Um, and one of my means of just chilling was just to draw. So every time after school, I'd go home, watch Dragon Ball Z, and then just draw Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, all those characters um, to the point where I just felt like it was, I don't know, it was just genuinely fun. And over the course of however many years, um, I started to progress in that artistry. Uh, started to branch off and draw my own characters or just draw comic book characters in, in the likes of Spider-Man, Batman, so on and so forth. Um, and then just growing up, I never knew, besides all the professions that you're saying, besides like nurse, being a doctor, lawyer, all that stuff, I didn't know that there was any type of profession that would pay you to just draw and I just had this like odd um just like mindset of just thinking what I want to be when I grew up and I just didn't know that the term graphic design was ever a thing until I was about seven years old so I was pretty young um I attended one of my cousin's birthday parties um and his brother, Mark Cruz, uh, he was on his computer and he was doing graphic apparel for DC Shoes. Whoa. And in my head, and I, I talked to him, I was just like, whoa, cool, you draw too? And then he's like, yeah, but this is actually my job. And then I was like, what do you mean, a job? And he's like, I make uh, graphic apparel for this company. And I was like, DC Shoes, you draw? for DC shoes. And he's like, yeah, I do it as a profession. And ever since then, I was like, okay, I want to be a graphic designer when I grow up. And I want to make all these products with like my drawings or just like my interpretation of ideas um, as I got older. So I was very lucky and fortunate enough to find that career at a very young age and know that um, my skill sets would like eventually and hopefully develop into uh, that profession. So I just have to think uh, Mark Cruz uh, for being that like beacon of hope for me and just like setting um, all the stones for me to be in the profession that I am now. That's amazing. Shout out to Mark Cruz and DC Shoes and I'm, mm -hmm. that's incredible for you to find that at a young age and especially to like have that strong of an impact on you to like I guess just guide you for the rest of your life. And that, that's amazing. Um, so we now know a little bit of the story, just the surface level of like the story and starting in that initial inspiration. Uh, maybe you can talk about like what that conversation was like when, you know, you had to bring that up to your family. You know, you're going to pursue this. This is something that, you know, you're obviously really like we're enamored with and you really enjoyed. And so can you talk about what that was like, you know, like having to talk to that with your Filipino mom and dad and just that whole idea. Like, I feel like that, that, that's, a, that's a big thing. I know. Um, I mean, you know, being in like a 
like a Filipino household, it's it's very tough just to grow up and and not be in like the categorized uh, profession that your parents see as successful. Um, but I was fortunate enough to to grow into a family with, for me, like a whole bunch of cousins, and they I want to say didn't have a traditional path as well. Um, my o- oldest cousin. Um, she went into the profession of being, sorry, she tried to be a doctor. Like she mm-hmm. had the necessary steps to be a doctor and then she wound up um, scrapping that idea and then just going into um, a profession with clothes as well. And then she landed a job. I could be doing like the timeline wrong, uh, but she landed a job at, urban outfitters and then became like this uh clothing buying guru um for them and then eventually made her way to uh Volcom Mm -hmm. um and then my other her younger cousin um she was in business and she scrapped that to pursue um yoga and um like spiritual massage Mm -hmm. therapy. So I think like because of my older cousins, it kind of like created this sense where my parents felt like it was okay to, to not have like the standardized professions of just going into like nursing and, and just being a doctor. So for me to tell them and approach them about being a graphic designer they're more so supportive um at first they're kind of hesitant in a sense where they're like um that's a great profession but just keep your options open but knowing that Mm -hmm. like ever since i was a kid and i always drew and i was always creative in in that light uh they've always encouraged me to be like okay okay if this is the profession you want to go in let's go into it full force so um when i did decide um to be a graphic designer they're all for it nice was there ever like any hesitancy like on your end in terms of you know i get it for your family to see like your older cousins seeing those things and making it you know a little bit easier like being more normalized um would it ever create like any sort of hesitancy on your end of being like you know like at the end of the day i'm still telling my parents that this is something that's different or like was it a little bit easier also because of like your cousin's influence of already being kind of in more unconventional professions? My cousins um, take on it like definitely helped. Um, But also like growing up as a kid, I felt like I was a rebel in a sense (laughs) where if I wanted to do my own thing, I definitely just went for whatever I wanted to do. So I think as much as I wanted my parents' approval, I mean, uh, eventually, and of course I did, um, it was something that I wanted to do no matter what. And I think just that sheer will and determination kind of just made my parents convinced that, hey, this is what he wants to do. So I, as my parents, should support him doing that. Yeah. And so can you maybe talk about now transitioning to like your professional life, like obviously like going to higher education and pursuing that because you did graphic design in in college, correct? Correct. So if you can maybe just shed a little light on that journey or what that was like um, majoring in graphic design at school, Um, just talking about some of the experiences that have maybe kind of helped you in like your work today or just, you know, some of the most memorable or impactful times. Um, College was a unique a unique story for me, knowing that I wanted to be a graphic designer as a kid, um, there were certain like subjects in school that I felt like I personally didn't need. <laughs> so, you know, it was just like learning a foreign language or, uh, I don't know, history, math, whatever, all the, <laughs> the GE stuff. I was just like, I don't need this to be an artist. I don't yeah. need this to, uh, learn as a graphic designer and stuff so in college when I finally started that I honestly got kicked out I got kicked out because I had very poor grades um I didn't do well all my GE stuff that I was like 
eventually forced in, I neglected and I didn't put my whole heart and soul in it because I knew that um, I just wanted to learn like pro the program of, of design, like Photoshop, Illustrator, all that stuff. And whatever they offered at the time, I couldn't, from what I remember, it's like they either didn't offer that, that class or um, I had to get my GEs done first prior to getting started on just my art degree. Um, but yeah, just like what I said before, I, I got kicked out of Palomar College for having bad grades. So I had to be suspended for, I think, like a semester or two, something like wow. that. Um, and it was just an opportunity for me to uh, just assess what is most important. And then just talking to my mom, um, yeah. thinking what would be the best uh, scenario for me to go in. Um, because I knew that I didn't want to go back to Palomar. And I knew that... Uh, if I wanted to take the step forward into an artistic career, it should be the right step. And luckily for our location, I lived in San Marcos at the time. Mm -hmm. My mom looked into Coleman College that, that offered, um, it's a trade school that offered a, a graphic design degree. And then she's like, a knock if this is what you want to do, I feel like this is like the best scenario for you to do. And me being stubborn, like if I wanted to learn graphic design, I wanted to learn from the best. So I was mm. looking into the art Institute, um, in LA, in San Diego, uh, looking at FITM, mm -hmm. um, a whole bunch of other stuff. And like Coleman college isn't known for their graphic design program, but they do offer it. And it was just like one of the, lower halves in my opinion um that I honestly I didn't want to join but I knew that in terms of like money and and finance stuff it wasn't something ideal for me to go to like the art institute or fit them so um for my mom's sake and and just like my parents sake in general I didn't want them to like waste so much money if I could get the same degree in mm -hmm. like a, a local trade school so I started my career off at um, Coleman College. It was in San Marcos, uh, a branch off of San Marcos, but I think they were located in Claremont. Mm -hmm. um, and I got my first hand at uh, graphic design. They gave me Illustrator and Photoshop. Oh, and <sighs> InDesign, it's literally called that. Um, and I would just immerse myself in that. Um, and I just wanted to learn so much in such a little amount of time, which I feel like is possible now because you could just YouTube everything. But um, just being in that uh, scenario with other students with the same goal just made me like so motivated to, to finish that out as soon as I could. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess we could go long story short. Um, Start off my career at Coleman College, graduated within, I think, a year, um, and then I got my first associate, sorry, I think it was a junior design mm -hmm. position at um, Sucre in Solana Beach in 2011. Nice. Just been doing it ever since. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Well, first, just for the audience to know, I think, um, I truly believe that uh, Jason is one of the smartest and you know wisest people I know, especially at our age. And I think um, sometimes we may um, have to experience those lows, like those valleys in our life for us to, to really catapult and shoot up. And it's really incredible to hear not only, you know, your concern for your family in terms of financially to just do the best thing that would, that would help your family that wouldn't, you know, kind of be crippling to you guys, but also for your parents to be pretty accepting of you and to really even help you look for a program to assist you. So it makes my heart warm to know that there was just, you know, positivity in that time of like, there could have been a lot of tension. There could be a lot of negativity. Um, I'm really happy that it worked out for you and um, you're still killing the game today. So just for the audience to know that, um, you know, I think school is never really indicative of our potential or our power. I think it's definitely just something that we have to go through. And um, yeah, you're still killing the game. So thank you for sharing that, Jason. That is that's really, really incredible. Um, I think now just kind of talking, like now that we're kind of getting to the professional life, maybe um, just talking about 
the journey of being, you know, a graphic designer, I guess maybe you don't have to go into it too much, but just briefly of just that junior position. Um, you were talking about your first gig was in Solana Beach to currently where you are now. Maybe just kind of mapping out a little bit of that timeline and just in terms of the different places you've been a part of, if you can speak on that and maybe just some of the things that, some of the best things you've learned from each of those entities. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I started my graphic design career at, um, in Solana Beach called Suker. And they were an ad agency that just did websites for other people. Um, but just being at a junior position, I didn't have the capacity to do like crazy web work. Um, and I, at the time I, my strengths were just in graphic design. So just like making like social media type posts, um, quotes, and I don't know, just like fun, fun, random, random stuff. But I feel like I, I got my footing and confidence um, with Studio 429 and being part of Choreo Cookies. Uh, at the time, Kristen and Keone were the directors and they sought me out to be their designer for any of their needs, which was either flyers, uh, t-shirts, and I don't know, just random, random stuff. Oh, like banquet flyers and, and all that. Awesome. Um, so I think it was just really cool to know that these two leaders had the confidence in me um, and just like to just trust me uh, with the team's like look and aesthetic to just pursue that and um, all the small little projects that they had me doing, which was mainly like t-shirts and stuff just made me very happy because knowing that like bringing it back to Mark and how he designed like clothes for DC, mm -hmm. I just felt like the, the parallel with me doing that too mm -hmm. with cookies and knowing that my younger self wanted to do those things and knowing that I was fulfilling it at the time just made like that dream in the past yeah. come true. So that was really, really, I don't know, really cool for them to, to just trust me in that. Um, but also just, I wanted to take that op opportunity and, and really give them my best. Um, and then kind of piggybacking off of that since uh, Keone was part of our, um team choreo cookies he also started kingdom made which was mm -hmm. uh an apparel brand that uh, donated charity sorry donated proceeds to charity mm -hmm. and um, he also had the confidence in me to be the creative i don't know visual designer for them um and for keone being keone like for him to trust you in something, I think that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, oh shit, you know, I got to really put my A game in this because there's a lot of people that look up to him and everything that he produces is, I feel like, I don't know, A class. And I wanted my designs to reflect his vision. Um, and just like collaborating with each other was like, it was inspiring because just to see what was going on in his, in his head, his con like conceptual ideas uh, to make it like tangible and me creating that as like a graphic, I think that process was an eye-opening event for me because I'm just like, um, there are so many things that go into an idea mm. and then for it to be executed properly, um, takes a lot of effort so it's it's not just like a simple thing that i once thought but knowing that there's there has to be depth and and um yeah knowing that there has to be depth throughout the process um, made me change my my motives too so yeah working with yoni and kingdom made has been amazing um and just got me more confidence to bring the skills that i learned in freelance and apply it to my current job at Suker. Uh, to the point where I got promoted to an associate designer, got more um, opportunities to get crazier tasks, and then eventually led me to my current job position now, kind of, at BVA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Cool, cool. And I know um, that's amazing. I mean, I think, um, and we'll, we'll get into all the dance stuff, you know, momentarily, but just to kind of like finish up this little section, I think that's amazing how um, he had that trust in you and how that actually almost elevated you because you were like, okay, I need to make sure that I match the vision, like you said, with clarity and it made you step up. So that's really, really awesome. Cause I feel like a lot of artists um, don't necessarily maybe um, are so diligent and so um, pure about like their work and how they, how they put it out there. So that's even like so many years ago to seeing you already like pushing yourself um, is, is really inspiring. Um, I think kind of going on that, talking about, you know, our current day and age and currently, you know, we're still sitting at home dealing with the COVID pandemic um, now. Um, maybe you can just talk a little bit about kind of how that's affected you and kind of, um, you know, maybe how you've been dealing with it, um, doing being a graphic designer um, and maybe just maybe you can speak a little bit about some of the projects or things that you're working on. Cool. Um, so like what I said earlier, I eventually got an opportunity to be a UX UI designer at uh, BVA. So BVXL, it's a, another uh, agency um, that specializes in recreating and redesigning websites for other brands. Mm. Um, and I've been with them I, ugh, maybe 2012. So I, I've been with them. No, that, that, that's not right. But I've, I'm approaching my fifth year or fourth. Ah, this quarantine, man. <laughs> um, exactly. Um, but I've, I've been working with them for a while. And uh, being in this pandemic, it unfortunately uh, brought me in a position where they had to put me on furlough. And for those who don't know what furlough is, it's just pretty much, I, I said this to, to my cousin who asked the same question, but um, it's as if you're part of a basketball team and you're benched and you're not getting paid, but you're still part of the team um, and you're not given minutes and stuff. So um, still part of BVA and, um, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that they didn't let me go. Um, but like given the circumstances, which I understand, I, at first I was pissed. Uh, well, actually I was reminded that I was um, hopeful I was hopeful and and okay with it and then like probably like a week later I was pissed but then after that um, after I got all my emotions out it gave me an opportunity to do more freelance work in terms of what I wanted to do personally because mm. I mean with that job um, you're put in a position where you have to design things for other clients and even though it is your designs Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not the designs that I want to make or create for myself. And then just being in this time of um, just being home and isolated, it gave me an opportunity to kickstart projects that have been in my queue for a while. So um, I earlier last year, back in 2019, um, I founded this company called Forum Brand. And it's identical to Kingdom Made in a sense where all of our proceeds go towards charities. And I get to create um, graphic apparel designs my way mm. and uh, simultaneously being able to provide um, just financial support for local charities and nonprofits. So I've I've had the opportunity since I have more time to to kick start that up again and being able to provide um, a little bit of money for our frontline workers by partnering up with the WHO, which is the World Health Organization. And then being able to do my side hustle, which is just design. Um, right now I'm designing championship rings for dance teams they're amazing by the way they are amazing i'll definitely have to link um the forum brands website and you know your, your instagram if you're okay with that um once yeah. these things go up because the, the work is incredible they look like they look better than the championship rings from the nba um that's amazing <laughs> but yeah just keep going on that please keep speaking light about that 
yeah so just having like this time for myself and just doing what I really want to do I feel like it it shows the the love that I put into my designs and it just I don't know it honestly just brings me happiness and then just getting the response the feedback from a whole bunch of people especially ones that I don't even know has been very rewarding that mm. is not in a sense where that's what I was fishing for or wanting but knowing that people that I have no contact with or honestly don't even know just to reach out and be like oh these are cool or like this is fire um just makes me feel like I'm doing something right as a designer you know and um like without I know like the pandemic is a very very bad thing and people are suffering and all that um but one one light in this situation is that it just gave me an opportunity to do something that I I didn't have a chance to do before and just seeing the positives in it being on on furlough and just not I don't know yeah just not having my regular uh schedules before but yeah yeah that's, that's amazing um thank you for that I think um kind of transitioning that um you kind of spoke about the NBA um I know one of the things I definitely want to talk to you and I know you have a lot to a lot of rich you know content to share about in terms of leadership um you know speaking about the, of the tragedies this year uh, as we all know, earlier this year, um, I know a big influence not only for myself but for you, um, Kobe. Kobe um, tragically passed away along with the nine other victims or nine victims in total. And uh, I think maybe just kind of shedding light in terms of how even someone that I don't know if you ever met him before or anything. I, I, I don't know if you ever met him before, but um, just on someone that I personally never met, I'm um, still having such a huge impact on me. I think what was that kind of like for you? you know, initially first finding out and then kind of just, you know, dealing with that, um, you know, during this time. Uh, Kobe, oh man, I feel like in many instances, that guy has influenced so many people, especially in, I don't know, all of my degrees in mm. people that I know, you know, and, um, I think just like his sheer hard work and determination has impacted many of our dancers. I mean, all of our, I don't want to say all of our friends, but many of our friends who are dancers uh, were Laker fans and being a Laker fan, you're a Kobe fan and um, whatever he did or wanted to do, you wanted to do too. And being, um, I don't know. I just feel like he was such a cool guy that whatever he did, I wanted to to replicate. And knowing this is, I'm going to take it back to um, knowing that he had a huge impact on Keone, uh, his work ethic, I guess both of their work ethics rubbed off on the people that uh, he just worked with. You know, just being on cookies, knowing that hard work is is something that was instilled in all of us it's something we wanted to always pursue and for the future generations we wanted to inspire um so just yeah being in the dance community knowing that if kobe could work hard to get a championship we as teammates could also work hard to fulfill a great medley and i think that also reflects me as a designer knowing that he didn't just focus on his personal skill sets, but he also reached out, watched film um, through other players and, and random uh, teams. I don't want to say random teams, but just specific teams for him to sharpen his skill set. And I wanted to do the same thing as a designer and just being like a jack of all trades and a master at all. And for him to pass away that I mean at first I didn't believe it I feel like with everybody in the world they didn't believe it or they want didn't want to believe it yeah um but knowing that he did and knowing the legacy that he left behind and him wanting to change the world for the better especially for women 
I wanted to pursue that with and for him too, um, knowing the impact that I have in our community, being a leader on our team, having a platform to provide um, just financial situations for nonprofits and charities. And, you know, just the list goes on and on. I wanted to, to carry that, um, that mindset in my life. And I'll continue to do it until I pass away. Um, but knowing that that's what he has instilled in me, I, I hope to continue or, I don't know, yeah, I hope to continue to inspire the younger generation to to do the same. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, it's um, it's definitely something that someone that, you know, you kind of almost look at as just invincible and untouchable and for someone to like that to be taken away in an instance, you mm. just are immediately reminded of you know, how, how mortal we all are and how precious life is. So um, it's definitely crazy. I did want to ask something smaller. I don't know if you remember where you were exactly and who exactly was the first person to reach out to you or how you found out. I feel like it's, it's one of those for me, it was like similar to like when Michael Jackson passed away and knew exactly where I was and knew exactly who told me the day and time and all that stuff. And so I was just wondering, and it, it was the same thing for me, for Kobe. So I, I don't know if you can maybe just speak a little bit about that. Cause I know that was just like a, a crazy moment. Yeah. Um, I was, I was at church, um, uh, service was about to start and then, you know, him, Josiah. Yeah. yeah. And Josiah approached me and he had this look on his face. That guy is like, like so happy go lucky mm -hmm. and very, very positive. Um, but he just approached me and he was just like, Jay, did you hear? And I was just like, what? And then he didn't say anything, but all he showed was that TMZ post on his phone. And it just read, um, Kobe dies in a helicopter crash. And then immediately I was just like, no way, you know? I didn't say that out loud, but then like all of the emotions, I think there's just like, I forgot what it's called, but like the five stages mm -hmm. um, just like ran through my head in like the matter of like 15 seconds where there's just denial, there's like pleading, so on and so forth, I forgot, and then just like acceptance. And then it happened really fast to the point where like, I'm just like, I gotta go sit down. Um, and then I remember just church is about to start. Uh, I sit next to my girlfriend, Nicole, and then she's like, what's wrong? And then I told her, uh, Kobe passed away. And then she was in denial too and didn't believe it. Um, yeah, it was just, it was a weird, odd time, but I think I was, I was very lucky and fortunate enough that I was personally at church because um, what the pastor had to say was ironically or symbolically um, about accepting your emotions, whatever is happening, just to, to allow it to happen, feel sad, feel mad, uh, and then just like turn to to God in that that sense in all that. So I'm just like, oh, dude, this this really helps. So yeah. I mean, not saying that it was easier, yeah. but it was just a better uh, situation for me. Yeah, yeah, that is. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm actually getting goosebumps as we're talking about it. It's uh, definitely something that always hits home, and it will never feel, you know, never feel real. And you're almost like, mm. like you said, in denial and just being like, there's no way. Um, but yeah, he definitely had a profound impact on, I know both you and I, and so many of our close friends or people in our community. Um, but one of the things that I do love about Kobe and I do love about you is your, your guys' ability to, to lead, to lead a group of people and to get a group of people on the same page. I think your guys' leadership styles, knowing you and then doing all my research and seeing all the documentaries and all the videos and the interviews and you know both of us we are obsessives about him um mm -hmm. i i can bet my money that you guys are really different in that sense so i, I think maybe just kind of shifting now just talking about leadership in general um i think just talking about your experiences with leadership whether it's stuff from you know, high school, college, um, in the workplace, or even, you know, the dance team, 
and the dance company Choreo Cookies that you know we both dance on and that you direct along with two other uh, of our, our, our great friends. Um, just talking about leadership and you know your style of leadership and your experiences of growing as a leader. Yeah, uh, I, I started dance in 2005 and I was part of our high school dance teams all male. Um, <laughs> yep. And then uh, having a, a captain there. Uh, it has taught me like, I don't know, at a young age, you, especially in high school, you feel like you know it all. You absolutely feel like you know it all. And um, having an opportunity to be a captain my senior year in 07 um, taught me really quick that there are just multiple per personalities on, on your team that you will never fulfill their needs and wants. You could get close. You could get really close, um, always being on the same page. Um, but people's motives may be different, and that's just something you have to accept. Uh, following that, we... Um, or I guess some of us, we joined Flipside, a junior team in San Diego, mm -hmm. and I was on that team for a year, and being under our director, Philip Geniza at the time, um, he taught me that creativity is like a huge upside in just being positive but being really stern really motivates others around you to, to accomplish that goal. Um, I'm just gonna like cycle through this like as quick as I can yeah, to get it. to like my point, but um, going into formality a year after that, being under Daryl Bellarmino mm -hmm. and Eric Saradpon, Daryl, he taught me to trust and invest into people that have potential. I say that because back in, in 2007, when I first got on Flipside, I, I feel like for me, I immediately um, was accepted into formality, knowing that I wasn't ready, but others thinking that I was. Mm. And I didn't have the confidence to be at the level of those dancers that have been there for years. And I was always down on myself, uh, thinking that I'm just not good enough to be on this team. But Daryl, Daryl, my, my director at the time, he had the confidence in me to be like, like, Jason, we, we chose you for a reason. There, there's some qualities about you besides like your dance skills that we believe we all could benefit from. And being being the director and talking to like a newbie a rookie mm -hmm. um created like this i don't know a flip in my mindset thinking like holy shit like this guy actually cares about me you know mm -hmm. like when i don't know i mean you and i we both started um well you started younger than than i have but like <laughs> at that time um being part of dance teams it was just like a, a dog eat dog Mm -hmm. cutthroat environment just to be in because everybody was out for each other and it wasn't even like teams versus teams but it was within within your teams <laughs> that was pretty aggressive and it uh, honestly it made all of us better but just for my leader at that time to reach out to me saying that hey dude you're you're okay you're gonna be okay um it just felt really gratifying and then just taking that experience from Daryl and eventually moving on um being like a regular dancer on cookies has made me respect and uh encourage others that were in my boat for me to encourage them the way that daryl encouraged me and uh just over time all of my experiences through my past it got me an opportunity to uh co-direct cookies back in 2015 under Keone and Carlo. So mm -hmm. they brought me up as a, a co-director in Keone's last year. And being in that position has, has been a freaking struggle. 
it was really hard. Um, but I, I just feel like with all of my positive and negative experiences as a dancer um, through high school, flip side formality, um, and just being under Emmett, Jeff, Kristen, and Keone, and Carlo um, has really shaped me into the director I am now. Um, but yeah, like all of those experiences, dude, it's it's been really tough because my first experience as uh, a captain in 2007 still reflect um, what I'm experiencing today, where mm. as much as I want to to fulfill everybody's needs and wants and stuff, I will always fall short as a director. And it has making me, it has made me um, just realize that I, I can't, I can't fulfill everybody's needs and wants. I could come close and it's something that I just have to accept. Like even though my best foot forward um, is my best foot forward, I feel like I'll always fall short. And I think after all those experiences, I learned to be okay with that. Um, so I'm kind of like going off on a tangent. What was no. your What was your initial question? No, I mean it was just just if you're and you're 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 actually hitting it on the head of just the um your experiences of just like growing as a leader. So I I loved how you were talking from you know the get go in terms of like your your leadership qualities. Learning that in 2007 um, from your junior team or from your high school all male dance team in, in high school. So just yeah, just just you know continuing to talk about like how you've grown as a leader and your your experiences of like learning leadership or when you talked about when you were on formality and how with Daryl like the director at the time like literally talking to you one on one as a newbie and being like that was that switch for you and saying that changed your perspective in terms of like feeling even more included and almost more enthusiastic about. You know, even though you personally didn't feel ready, um, your director believed in you. So just, I guess, you know, learning those qualities and learning those things uh, over the course of your, like, dance career or your professional career um, and just how that's made you to the leader it is today. So, I mean, if you have anything else to share about, like, what else has contributed to that, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you, I feel like just as an individual, you just learn a lot from your your past experiences and whether it is good or bad it just applies to the now and um i i've had numerous negative experiences with formality and <laughs> um just like that duration um but i was able to to apply all of those um you know just just bad times into what we have now and turning all of that into a positive experience, knowing how I could turn a team that may have, I don't know, just like a naysayers and just shit talkers into understanding where they're coming from and being like the Daryl to me, um, being that person for them and just giving them an opportunity to speak their mind and just be comfortable with knowing that their opinions matter to me and how I could make their experiences on cookies better. Yeah. Um, and then just like learning great things from Emmett, how he's, I don't know, I feel like he's the master guru at planning. He is always on point and I swear like he, at the time, he uh, planned like months in advance, um, make, breaking everything down uh, minute by minute. And that has instilled in all of the up and coming directors after him. Um, Jeff Morales being so enthusiastic and, and um, kind hearted. Uh, very motivational always pounding his chest and just <laughs> being there with you you know like um eye to eye and he's it's not he's not just talking to your face but he's like talking to your soul mm -hmm. and when you're in rehearsals like you feel it and you want to fulfill that for him and then Kristen being a f I feel like the best female director in San Diego being so creative 
and visually representing storytelling uh, when she had like her side projects for like True Death and like OTD uh, to translating all of that stuff onto cookies. Um, she is one of the most talented people that I know. Uh, and I'm just mad. I'm just mad that she she cut her time short on cookies because I knew that she offered, she could have offered like a lot more. Uh, but I mean, life life happens and stuff. Yeah. And uh, Keone being oh man our our generations our uh dances kobe um and still killing the game now and and um i don't know just inspiring people has made me feel like dude i gotta work harder to to do what he has done um and then carlo just being a really humble kid where he was I'll say this to his face but like he wasn't the best dancer but he just worked so hard <laughs> so damn hard and taking many classes that were not considered cool but him also being like his own like jack of all trades with dance and just working absolutely hard behind the scenes to become like the leader he is like he's inspired many and he's made me grow into the leader I am too so just taking everything from the past leaders and all the qualities that they have and just trying to not necessarily mimic that for our team, but just to get those qualities and be able to share that with our current teammates so that we could hope that the leaders can inspire them to do the same thing for the next generation. Mm. Absolutely. I think um, it's it's crazy how, you know, we've talked about Kobe and leadership and like, you know, almost you being a pioneer in terms of, you know, being Filipino, but still pursuing the arts and in spite of all the, the valleys that you face, like coming through those adversities, you almost remind me in terms of specifically like um, leadership wise and your approach to it, you remind me of, uh, this just actually came in my head right now, but you remind me of Phil Jackson. You remind me of Phil Jackson in the sense of just, you you have this you know in 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 maybe a time that other people may be um shaken or might be like acting kind of erratic like you have this just great quality to always remain calm and i think with that it's like you know on cookies on the on the dance team again for those of you that don't know that um that we dance on that jason's one of the three directors that directs um it's easy to look at at you and to be like okay like we're going to be fine because the leadership and that, you know, that you being that rock um, is there. So it's, um, it's crazy also just to see like the rich experience you have in terms of all facets of your life, in terms of whether it was dance or it was, you know, from your parents and that strong, um, you know, that strong household, like support that you had. Um, it's really incredible to see like what you've become today and to see, where you are uh, now. And so, I mean, if you could just even speak a little bit about just current day and age, you know, you as a leader, current day and age, um, just the work you're doing, you know, obviously trying to be as productive and as busy as possible during these times. Um, you know, we love to hear that. Yeah. Oh man. Um, I think just having a support system ever since I was a kid in my parents, my mom um, has been like something I just want to give back. Um, how my mom has always been there for me and how she's always encouraged me in, in many aspects of my life. I wanted to be that type of figure to others that may look up to me in that sense. Um, being, being on my 10th year on cookies half of my years on there so five years mm -hmm. uh, just being a regular dancer and just soaking up all I can with the peers around me um, and just like holding on to that and then having an opportunity to direct for the next five years um, and being able to teach so just like flip-flopping mm -hmm. um, it just it has been amazing it has been an amazing experience and then just trying to spill all the knowledge uh, gradually 
to these people uh, has been very rewarding to me because what my previous leaders has done to me has, I feel like has benefited me in life um, and just applying whatever I learned in dance into my career as a designer or even my antics as a person. Um, just trying to stay and be positive during crunch time or um, just be very critical and straight to the point whenever it comes down to that that business anyways i think i'm just like going off on another random ass tangent but no, you're good. um i think overall it's just trying to be positive um wherever i can and whenever i can um knowing that it's like one of my last times being a leader in our dance community mm. i'm talking about like with cookies and stuff and my timeline is a lot short shorter than our current generation i i want to be able to provide and just teach uh the knowledge that i've attained in my years as mm. as a dancer and knowing that as a designer though well, i guess specifically this year as a designer we have a few teammates of ours um daniel and aunt um they are getting into the field of being a, a designer as well. So I want to teach them as much as I, that I can um, and give them like shortcuts. Uh, yeah, give them shortcuts in their career because I feel like they are going to be taking over my position once I'm gone and to effectively um, criticize, I don't want to say criticize, that sounds so harsh, <laughs> but just effectively teach them things that I have learned personally in my past and then guiding other leaders like Marilyn with social media um, and just seeing that our reflection as a, as a team on our general public means a lot more than just whatever we put on stage um, and just to engage with our, our audiences and just connect with people as much as we can um collaborating with with chris and carlo uh showing the teammate that effective communication really works and um i don't know just being present definitely mm -hmm. just being present and Same. and there during re your your rehearsals and stuff just means a lot um also trying to i don't really do this as as much because i'm busy and now because of the pandemic, but just being part of the team outside of rehearsals and creating that camaraderie um, really helps. So I don't know, there, there's many and I could just go on and on, but I think, the, I think my main point is just trying to be positive and influential uh, to your peers uh, goes longer or a much longer way than you would expect amazing i appreciate that um just to kind of close this this guy out i did want to kind of touch back to the beginning and i think something cool that i that i think about um often not as much as i did before um is always you know the things that we learn throughout our lives whether it's through the job experiences or the adversities we face in our in our own individual journeys. Um, I just want to ask, you know, after everything you've learned so far in your life and in terms of, you know, what you've done um, and in your profession and pursuing graphic design and being, you know, Filipino and being that minority, um, what would you say to your 13 year old, 14 year old self, um, or just, you know, anyone who may be tuning in, in terms of, you know, pursuing something that you love, pursuing something that you had a genuine interest and, you know, maybe they might be on the fence of like, I don't know if I should pursue that. This is going to be sustainable, so on and so forth. Like, what would you say to, what would you say to those people? I think you just got to try. Because there was this one, one instance where we had this rehearsal called Cookies Experience. And it was... Um, it was along the same line of questions, but I, I answered it in the sense where you just have to try. 
to the point where you'll never ask yourself what if in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of those things where you might honestly regret um, is by not trying. And if you fail, you fail, you know? But I think, especially since you're young and you have um, aspirations to do something, I feel like you should just do it, you know? Um, it could be scary, it could be very intimidating, but if it's something that you're just motivated to do and you have like a, a support system behind you to do so, like there's no losing. There's definitely no losing in that sense. And um, shit, you know, like it could turn into a profession, especially if it's something that you love, absolutely love to do. You will never work a day in your life, you know? <laughs> so um, whoever whoever it is, like 13, 14 years year old self, if it was a 13 year old me, I would just be like, keep on drawing. Uh, believe in yourself um, and know that whatever you're doing now benefits you in the future. All of your experiences um, will shape you into who you are now, um, the good and the bad. And uh, your future will, will, will thank you for it. So uh, just keep going at it. Work hard, really. Uh, study as much as you can. Um, and just uh, inspire others to do the same. Amazing. There's a lot. I think, um, like I said, and I mentioned in the beginning, you um, you just have a great head on your shoulders, Jason, and you truly do lead by example. And you've done that, I think, in my opinion, since the day you decided to pursue graphic design. And you know, maybe being a little biased here, being an artist myself, I think uh, it's incredible that you've you know, truly made a wonderful life for yourself in terms of all the spaces you've involved yourself with, whether it's your graphic design and, and, or, and even in the dance community and being a leader there and now to leading, you know, one of the most successful dance teams, you know, to ever, uh, in my opinion, you know, to ever like grace the earth. So it's just, uh, it's incredible. Even if you just break it down to those two small things, like it's, it's, it's incredible how much you've accomplished with just that initial passion um, just to pursue what you love and to just be genuine and always exemplifying leadership skills, even from a young age. So I just want to thank you again, Jason, for being on the video podcast today, episode two of the of like minds podcast. Um, if you didn't have anything, any last bits of um, wisdom you want to share with us, um, you know, unless we'll probably have you back at some point, but um, if you want to close us out with any other things, if we miss anything, um, and if not, you know, then uh, we'll call it, we'll call it an episode. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I'll just say I'm just going off of, off of a whim here on a whim, off of a whim. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, life is hard, ladies and gentlemen, and your youth, I feel like might be your best years, but that doesn't mean um, to be afraid of it. Uh, tackle it head on. Um, make sure that the people that are surrounding you um, are the same type of people you want your kids to hang out with. Mm. And um, never forget the smaller people in your life. Uh, thank those around you who are big or small. Um, say hi to your parents every once in a while. <laughs> Um, and yeah, honestly, just follow your dreams. I said this before, but try to follow a profession of yours where you feel like you're not working a day in your life. Appreciate it so much, Jason. I just want to leave you with something and for the audience uh, and the viewer, whoever's tuning in, um, just want to remind you guys that you guys are successful. You are a boss. You inspire me and I will always be a fan even from afar. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming in onto the show and donating your time today. I hope you have a wonderful day. You stay safe and healthy and we will catch you next time. Sir, love you. Thank you. Love you too, man. Thank you so much.